Welcome to Barbells Business and Boobs, where we discuss navigating everyday life as lifters, business owners, and being a woman in a male-dominant native industry. I'm Christy Sine. Hey Diamond, and today Christy and I are going to talk about coaching, how to start an online coaching business. So we are both in the online field of training, so we're going to talk about five things today. Exactly how we got started, how to get clients, coaching best practices, pricing in various packages, benefits and challenges. And you're also going to get two exciting things for free from Christy and I both. So make sure you listen to the whole episode. So let's get right into it. Christy, how did you start? I love your story. Well, my story, yeah, of course, is, is kind of exciting, but also, you know, because there's a lot of risk involved because I went from in-person training to online, like, just like with the drop of the hat, because I, I had to out of necessity, really, because I was moving, uh, leaving my successful in-person business in Chicago, all my clients, which I love, but I had a, definitely a full roster. And when I moved to LA, I was like, okay, well, I'm not going to have clients there. And I wanted to have a little more freedom and be a little more mobile. And so what I did was I left Chicago and, um, during that time I went on vacation with my family and that's when I was like building my website. And when I came back, I didn't have an apartment anymore and I just shipped my car to LA and I landed in LA and was looking for an apartment at the time. So I was in an Airbnb and that's when I actually got my first online client. So I was promoting it online. Um, and you know, so I had like zero income, zero clients. And within a few weeks, I, you know, was able to get on my feet, you know, move into an apartment and all that fun stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's basically the long story short of how I went online uh, from in person. But, you know, before that, I had established my presence online already. So, you know, that I was still able to easily promote just using my social media. So I just want to put that out there because it was, um, you know, I'm very impulsive. It was kind of like a crazy risk, but out of necessity of having to make it happen, you know, of course, like that's all I, I did all day was try to make this business work. Did you do a lot of research prior and talk to people or was it just kind of like, all right, I want to move and now I'm just going to be online? Yeah, I did. I actually, I moved to LA especially because I felt like more people were doing the online space. That's like when like Barbell Brigade was super cool and like there was all the powerlifting was really big and people were becoming like, you know, there's like a Larry Wheel, stuff like that. Like people were really excited about powerlifting and a lot of coaches um, and the popular coaches were in um, Los Angeles, you know, powerlifting is really big there. So there's like a market for it. Like people need a powerlifting coach, which is when you think about a really small niche in the fitness industry. So um, when I went to LA or I had a few friends that were in that area who were coaches. And so I talked to them, like, what apps do you use or how do you deliver coaching? Um, and I was able to mirror um, some things off of them. Um, but I, it was, pretty blind, but like when I went to LA, I had a little bit more influence because I was around, you know, all my friends, like that's what we did. Um, we're self-employed. We go to a coffee shop and do our coaching there. So it's not like I didn't, I was blind, but yeah, it was, it was mostly figuring out as I go, but making sure I was talking to people about it. What year was this? Or do you remember the exact date that you moved to LA? Um, this was in 2018, like this, uh, the late summer. And I've been a personal trainer, um, since 2013. So I have like a lot of in-person experience. And what I found too, um, was when you train people online, they, they need a program or no, when you train people in person, they just come to you for one session, mm -hmm. you know, uh, a week or two sessions a week. And you know, you need more than that. Um, so I was also already offering them free programs through Excel spreadsheets. I would share with them so they could do on their own when they weren't with me. And I was doing that for free um, because I didn't really value my time as much. Um, and I was getting really burnt out. Um, so, you know, I already knew that I could do it online. And when I discovered there were more apps and all that stuff that could help you, you know, it definitely helped a lot. Thank you. So, um, yeah. So you've been coaching. What about you? So you've been coaching for 10 okay. years and in the online space now for five, which is crazy because I remember when you first moved to LA, you know, I didn't actually know you then, but like I knew you from my own online presence. That's funny. But 
So I was the opposite of Christy. Christy, I really admire that she just trusted herself and dove headfirst. And we joke a lot about her being, in, well, us being impulsive, but you definitely took the more impulsive route than I did. I was almost too cautious and too calculated and scared. So I think that the uh, people listening right now, you're going to either resonate more with how Christy did it, which is awesome. It looks she's obviously successful or how I did it. We're both obviously successful. So either way is good. So I, like Christy, was training people in person for years. I started at the Cape Ann YMCA doing group classes when I was 18 and all throughout college. I did it on the side. And then I had a corporate job for several years after college, but I still trained people on the side. I started doing seminars. And there was a point when I was just kind of burnt out of traveling and coaching people in person. I feel like I didn't have a second to breathe. And like Christy said, you can only help someone so much in person. You know, they might be getting an hour of your time and paying X number of dollars, but they really do need a program. And Christy, I know just from talking to you, you're we kind of coaching for free to some regard because we would also mm -hmm. give our clients, we would tell them what to do on the days they weren't with us. So we were doing that for years for free. And that's something that I want to make very clear is you're not going to go into this making money right away. You have to put out your knowledge and your resources for free before you even think about making money. And I, I don't think a lot of people want to admit that. And that's for any coaching business, uh, you know, even if it's just uploading educational content for whatever coaching realm you're in. So it was finally in 2020 during the pandemic when I knew I was going to get laid off from my corporate job. And at this point in time, nearly half my clients were laid off or had a reduction in their hours. So I was coaching a lot for free, but I just had faith that everything was going to work out. And that's when I just decided that I didn't, I no longer wanted to be in the corporate world. Cause I wasn't even sure, you know, if life was going to go back to normal, but I knew everyone was working out at home during the pandemic. So that's when I made the decision. And I remember it like it was yesterday. It was the morning and I was meditating and just something told me like, I need to do this. And that was, oh, it's August, almost three years ago to the date that I decided that and haven't looked back. And it's definitely been a wild ride of ups and downs. I don't want anyone listening to think that this is easy. I think that actually coaching Christy and I, you know, we're really good friends off of this podcast and we are always, we have each other's back just in terms of some of the obstacles and the ups and downs of owning a business, which any entrepreneur can relate to. So that's how I got into it. <laughs> yeah. A lot of it is figuring it out. You know, we both have different backgrounds, right? Of education and we didn't go to like, you know, no one went to like entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial school or, you know, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about our backgrounds then. Cause I, I went to art school and so that definitely helped me a lot in my business. But, um, then when I went to personal training and personal training school, they just teach you about, you know, anatomy and how to train people. And then you, you get really good at, um, you know, having the skill of coaching, but then if you're just on your own and you've your own business, it's like, how do I own, I was, especially when I started my first few years in, in LA, like I was really struggling. I wasn't making much money. I didn't know how, even though I had a lot of clients, I just still was hard to, you know, pay rent and, and make bills um, because I didn't really know how to create a better system for myself um, and also like make it a profitable, profitable business. What did, uh, I think it's interesting um, about like your education, and your major and how that's helped you. Yeah. And we'll touch on this a lot too, because uh, sometimes there were times where I regretted like not going to school for kin because I was always in the kin department, but I was actually in major, a major in journalism and then switched over to communications simply for the fact that I was an athlete and all the journalism classes were at a time I wasn't, I had to be at practice. So switched over to communications and I feel like that was kind of, at the time I'm like, what am I going to do with this? But I don't regret. I feel like I use that more than anything. And then I just later got different certifications over the years, which again, I'm thankful for because I feel like you can go to school for something, but unless you are all out passionate about it, you also need 
the experience to back the education. So time in the gym was probably the most valuable piece piece of education I've ever had. Yeah, I definitely agree too, because I think that now online coaching is so um, common. People just, you know, get good at lifting and actually are really smart with programming, but they'll just jump into online coaching. But I am so glad that I had so much in-person experience because I can identify things so much better over video or the way someone um, explains something to me because I've, I've experienced that so much in the gym, hands on, you know, hundreds, thousands of clients, hands on in the gym, watching them lift, correcting things um, and just in person, um, you know, helps, helps you kind of develop yourself as a coach and being around other coaches in the gym um, it's rather than just being just you and the computer screen. Um, forever. I feel really strongly about that point because like you said, everyone's just trying to be an online coach these days. And I feel that everyone should have some type of in-person experience before they dabble with online coaching because you really don't have any business helping people unless you have worked with an actual body because it's a lot different. And I believe that you can apply the skills that you learn in person to online, but not the other way around, if that makes sense. Yeah, I totally agree. So, all right, let's move on to our second point that everyone wants to know. Probably the scariest part, but also the way you make a living. How to get clients in the online capacity. Chris, do you want to start? Yeah, I'll, I'll get started there. Um, so, how to get clients? Well, there's many ways. And for me, I always leaned into social media because it is an online business. And so for me, having online presence has, was really, really helpful. Do I think you need to have an online presence, like a big following to get clients? No, but I do think you should be out there um, providing valuable free content and, um, and showing your personality or what your coaching is about. And that's going to attract the clients to you. So um, social media. Um, also, if you... If you think about it, like when you're an actual personal trainer in person, you, they called it work the floor. You might've like worked at, um, I worked at big box gyms where they, oh, you got to work the floor and you go around talking, people trying to help and all that stuff. But all that is, is making relationships. Um, so, you know, still responding. If someone asks you a question, responding to them online, being helpful, all that fun stuff, because once you get one or two good clients, you're going to get referrals just like it is in, in person. Um, so first and foremost, you want to give some people go above and beyond and give people exceptional service and be really, really good because they are your clients and they're going to get you more clients. So um, that's really important. But uh, uh, posting um, really valuable content on social media and doesn't have to be like, you know, super crazy or anything. Um, but, you know, it's important that the your clients here Maybe, you know, everyone might say, oh, I know how to brace, but it's important to hear that from you. You're their coach so that you're setting it's you, you know, this is only online coaching. So they need to see you doing that, you know, giving the cues and also walking the walk, you know, share your experiences and your stories because people are going to relate to that. You know, um, I feel like with, with my coaching and stuff, like I had trouble in, in regular gyms because no one really wanted to do barbell lifts. I want my clients for wanted to do like a hit workout, but that's not me. So luckily online, I can attract those clients for me just by being myself and promoting exactly what, what I do. So that's where I mainly focus my attention, but that's because I had already, I've already built the, the following, um, you know, and then I just nurture the relationships after that. Um, but that's definitely not the only, only avenue you can go about. So mine was similar to how I got clients because I've had an online presence. I was actively competing, which I think that was probably the best business coaching decision I made was to compete and do it at the same time because I was actually out in the community. And it's funny because I'm going to relate so much back to in-person because even to this day, even though I have an online presence, I almost use my online presence as a way to engage with my clients and secure the relationships like you use the word nurture because a lot of my clients still come from in person just whatever gym I'm going to if I'm traveling or if I'm at me and talking to people of course there is a percentage and I don't know the breakdown that come just from 
you know, my online presence. And that's, that, that for me, that's the most rewarding aspect of coaching is like when someone just knows me from the internet and they start working with me, then years later, I get the opportunity to actually meet them in person. But like you said, answering questions and answering DMs, just like you would quote unquote, work the floor as an in-person trainer, same thing. And I, I almost think it's harder at least for me, in an online capacity, because you have to sit down and, you know, social media, it's social, right? But it's not the same as in person. So for me, it's a little bit harder to establish that relationship just through texting and words and DMs. But I do try to like show my face. And like you said, show your personality. And I think you have, you have a very good niche. You know, I think you told me once, like all your clients have tattoos and stuff. So that's really, really cool. Yeah. Yeah. They're all like me, you know, they all find you in it. And it is all about like building trust. You know, I feel like when I first started online, online training, I, or before, so I was like, like, uh, like I roll, everyone's being an online coach, you know, it's not good. Like they're just copy pasting program. It's a scammy thing. It's kind of what I thought until I was able to figure out like, oh, there's so much good like technology. Like you can share so many documents now or use an app and also have your own demo videos and stuff like that. Um, you know, we both use, um, you know, video messaging for our clients as well. So to analyze lifts. So there's so much value in that, but you got to communicate it, but it, it's all about establishing trust, which is definitely easier in person when someone sees you all day. And so, um, you know, just be yourself. Um, I know it's just like, sounds like uh, kind of like some cop out advice to be yourself because those clients will find you and then their, their friends are probably like them and they'll find you there. And don't, if you are promoting yourself on social media, um, cause that's not the only way, like when you said, like you, we meet people at meets and competitions and stuff like that or expos. But, um, you know, if, if it is on social media, don't worry about the likes so much. You don't need a big following. You need valuable well, people who like connect with you and like you. Um, but, just post content you think will be valuable for those potential clients. And that's really all you need to do. If you get two likes on it, who cares? You know, there's um, both of our social medias. We've, we always talk about this. Um, you know, the engagement has been down, but look, we we have more clients mm -hmm. than ever, you know, the, the best clients ever um, because you can have a hundred thousand followers, but you don't need a hundred thousand that, you know, you need, you need like, you know, a handful of really good yeah. ones. Um, and then you need to keep you them. Said the, the conversion rate would be interesting to see, but I think what you said, establishing trust and posting good educational content. And I just want to add to that too, that you don't need to overthink it. Like sometimes I worry, like, is this not educational enough, but I'll, I'll make little jokes. Like I'm actually using my personality. And I feel like that always attracts the right clients. Mm -hmm. They understand me. Like I'm not a super serious, like, Oh, let's make sure your hips are at 90 degrees and go like this and make sure to death. I'm like, all right, girl, let's go get a little lower. Like, and I joke about that with myself. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. And, and also just don't see other businesses as your enemy more. So partner with them. Like me and Brittany are both coaches. Like we've never like stolen clients from each other. Stop. I'm sure we've had like maybe old clients in our inboxes before or something like that, but like, you know, um, Go on, go on podcasts, go, you know, try to work with other brands within the community um, and help each other out. You know, you do a, you could do a seminar with another coach. I mean, it's, a, it's okay. There's, there's more, what's that expression? Well, there's just enough to go around really, you know, like it, there's enough to go around and working with people will help you rather than isolating yourself, be a part of the community. Um, you know, just being in South Carolina, I feel really far away from the whole lifting community at times. Cause it's not as big here as it was in Chicago or California where I lived, you know, I'm not like going to the same gym as Brittany right now or anything, but like, um, I, you know, try to stay connected and involved and, you know, don't see other coaching businesses or enemy. You guys can work together. It'll only boost, you know, people knowing about you, knowing who you are. So like, talk about, you know, don't be afraid to put yourself out there a little bit. So you just said South Carolina. So I think it's important for anyone listening to know that Chrissy and I have taken our business to several different states. So that's really cool. I think it's an accomplishment that we often don't talk about enough. And that's one of the benefits that we'll get into later of online coaching is you can literally, it's hard, 
but it will, you know, sometimes be working. There have been times where I've been working pulled over on the side of a random road while I was moving, but you know, you can make it work. So this is a good segue into our next point, which I feel is the most important and not talked about enough coaching best practices. So to me, coaching is obviously a mix of science and data. But it's also communication and art, which I feel people do not talk about enough, especially in the online capacity. So, Christy, let's start with some of what you think the best practices are. Yeah, best practices, um, you know, for me, it's mostly having clear expectations for yourself and your clients. So that means knowing exactly what services you're offering, what days you check in, what do you expect for your clients? Because um, you need to have their their needs met. Um, you know that is that is this that is what you're selling is that service. So to to have it very clear and laid out what you're expecting for your clients and what they should expect from you is super super important. Um, and that also helps you establish boundaries, um, which is really, really important in this business because with social media, you know, right now I have my Instagram, I communicate to my clients through WhatsApp, also the training app, you know, um, you know, emails, Google forms, everything. I'm very easy to get in touch with. So knowing when to be very alert and into work and when to shut it off. So having that balance of, you know, your client being available for your clients because serving them is very important. Like, you know, you don't want to just forget about them for a week and, you know, have no, no communication, but also because you're running a business as well as coaching, you know, you're the business owner and the employee. So knowing when to shut off. So those are my top two best practices. Um, what about yours? Mine are in line with yours as well. The boundaries, that's something, if you're listening, you know, the best step to get started in coaching is just start. But if I could go back and do one thing over, it would be to have those boundaries because we've talked about this both before when we both started coaching online, we were getting burnt out because there are so many communication mediums and I was accessible almost 24 hours a day. I remember one time... I always had a 24 hour turnaround policy and a client sent me something on WhatsApp and I didn't answer because their check-in was later. And they had the audacity to say to me like, Hey, you posted on Instagram, but didn't answer me. And. Oh my God. So I get like paranoid about that. So I do too. It still makes me feel a little weird, but that's why I now have something called communication guidelines which I wish I had them from the beginning of my business and I'll share a link so everyone can have them. So it's literally an agreement between me and the client and I make them sign off and it says, I can't guarantee that I'm going to see your message unless it's your check-in time. If it's an emergency, you email me with that on the subject line. And believe it or not, there's actually been times when things are not emergencies and people still will reach out and I'm learning, I'm learning now to gauge a person buy an onboarding call to see if they're a good fit or not. And I'm not afraid to turn down someone if they're not a good fit because, you know, this is my livelihood and I want to always like what I do. So if I don't have a good rapport with a client, then it's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And, and something that I do too, is like that's important to topic is the onboarding process, seeing if they are a good fit. Like, you know, um, I have a Google form that people um, fill out so I can review it. And then with all my clients beforehand, um, before we even start, I do just give them a free call. I want to know um, about them. And, and the reason I keep on doing this, because, you know, there are reasons maybe why you'd want to do a, um, you know, call where a consultation call where they pay, they pay you and put some money down. I would totally understand. Um, but for me, the clients I get, for some reason, every time I get on a call with someone, they sign up for my coaching um, if they're a good fit. So there's not much of a risk or if they don't sign up, like they usually come down the pipeline later. Um, but actually like having that, that talk and establish that that conversation is super important. Um, and it can kind of, kind of definitely gauge a little bit more about a person when you, when you talk to them. Um, so for me, like that's been a good tool to, to way to like kind of screen clients to see if you're even a good fit. Cause I do have some clients 
who come to me who I'm like, man, like, I don't know if I really want to do a toning program at a home gym. And I'm like, wait, that's not the kind of coach I am. Like we, we're not a good fit, but how, this person is, you know, um, cause that's not good for anyone. Some other best practices and tools that I use that are worth every penny are Loom, WhatsApp for business and Calendly. So those are all services. WhatsApp is free, but I pay for Calendly. It's, I think it's a hundred dollars for the year and I'm able to set my schedule for when clients are allowed to book times. I also do consult calls. So there's a 30, a 60, and then like a 15 minute free call for new clients. And that allows me to save time by not, I used to waste a lot of time going back and forth, especially with like different time zones, like trying to figure out a time that works. So I love, love, love Calendly, Loom, which I see you use now. That is, so instead of typing a novel to my clients, I can just hop on Loom and literally like I'll be here right in this room demoing different exercises and I'll pull up their videos on my phone that they send me on WhatsApp and I'll be like, see this right here? Yeah, you don't, we want to do this. So I love Loom. And then WhatsApp for business is huge because it allows me to put an automatic response on um, an away message, things like that, so that people are aware of my hours and I just find it makes it really easy. So again, those are three best practices that I wish I had implemented sooner. Yeah, but um, that's really cool that, that that technology is there because it makes it so much easier to like have a little more of a seamless process. So before I use Loom, because I saw you use Loom, I'm like, I'm going to see what this is about. I was just using WhatsApp and I would send the video, um, you know, just straight to WhatsApp. And of course I'd be demoing here or sending them a link or something like that. Um, explaining what they need to do um but loom i love it because it can put your like picture of yourself doing it over something or over or explaining a program it just makes it awesome i love it so You're welcome. For that. um i think it's be better than just saying the whatsapp um and the and the one thing with um but yeah anyway i love it so all that technology i for delivering programs you can do it with um and just an email you can do an excel sheet or you can do a training app. Um, and there might be other ways. I don't know, like sending them mail or something, but like <laughs> sending them a little postcard. Um, I use an app just because I have so many demo videos and so many, um, you know, different programs that I already have uploaded to the app. And I, my clients really love um, like the analytics and things that pop up that when you hit a PR and stuff like that. Um, and it makes it easy for me to track just because I'm not very good with Excel at all. I'm so bad. I have Gary help me with like formulas. I'm like, how do you add these numbers together? I'm bad. I do plan my clients' programs in Excel. I will, cause I like to plan them linear, linearly, but you know, it's very like not very formal. It's just almost like my notes. And then I put it into the app. So, um, there's also a messaging system in the app. I don't like that much. Um, so that's why I use WhatsApp. It's so much better to, for communication. Um, so honestly, what's the best one? It's whatever you're good at, you know, like I, the best coach I've had, um, you know, Josh Bryant that we've both had, um, he does Excel. I've also trained with Trevor Jaffe. He did email and yeah. I was fine. So I didn't really need those fancy things, you know, because they always delivered on time. It was professional as a program that worked, but Man, I, I love I love the app because it just adds a lot of value to, value to my program because I have so many videos. So it helps me organize because I'm not a very organized person. You know, I'm not very, um, I'm not going to be able to create my own Excel sheet. That's going to work very well to share with clients. I know you're a lot more organized <laughs> than I am <laughs> um, in that way. You know, like, like you're like, you probably write really like neatly on paper. I'm like chicken scratch everywhere type person. Um, so that's why I use that. But I just want to put that out there is there's no wrong. There's so many different ways to do it. No one like wrote down, like you have to online coach like this. It's like whatever you can do the best and deliver quick information and have it be professional, you know, is totally exactly. I tried a couple apps. I've tried true coach train heroic. And I actually just, I don't know if it's mm -hmm. like the little OCD. I mean, but I do, I use Google uh, sheets for everything because it lets me put like mm -hmm. notes in and then I have my own demo library built in within that. So it's, and it's funny because I've tried to switch to an app before, but then I don't know. I think my clients are just used to that. So I just stick with it. Yeah. And that's the thing too. It's like some people don't want another app. 
either. So it just depends. I switched to train heroic from true coach because I wanted to build a team out and it seemed like the easiest place to do it. Um, and so I've been very happy with it, but I will say, I do think inputting stuff like, cause I do it on my Excel sheet and my chicken scratch. And then I transfer it really nicely to the app. It does take me more time. So, you know, um, you have to take that into account with, you know, how much you're charging or just how many clients you have, you know, there's only so many clients you have. Um, I don't know how much you're charging. Yeah. So let's like, talk about we, packages and pricing and how we do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's that's imp- that's an important point too because we were both personal trainers. Did you ever work at a commercial gym where they had packages? No, set? I didn't. I almost went to that fancy Equinox, but then I just went to a strength gym because I didn't like uh-huh. that I only made like fifteen percent. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's the thing too. Okay. So back in the day when I worked at Lifetime Fitness, should I even mention their name? I don't know. They were great. They were fine. Um, but well, actually my first gym, I worked at charter fitness. This was like in East Chicago and Indiana. And I, it was like $30 a session about, and I got like 50% of yeah. that. This was back in like 2013, 14. Um, but they did have different packages, right? So if you, the more, you know, more sessions you buy, the less the each session was, you know, it was just to get you buy more. Um, when I was at lifetime fitness, um, eventually I worked my way up to be a manager. Um, and so I was charging $120 a session, but I only got like 50% of that, but I wanted to be a powerlifting coach. So like who was going to buy, pay me $120 a session for powerlifting. Unfortunately, it's not really the market, maybe like bodybuilding or CrossFit, but not powerlifting. Um, so just keep that, in, just keep that in mind. But, um, so but there's packages there too, right? If you buy more, it might be a little bit less. Um, and, but that is, it is important because it makes it so that you have more accessible, um, options, you know, and not everyone's going to be able to afford your one-on-one coaching. So having different packages is really important. So what kind of packages? Yeah. So you I have? break it down and when I was first starting, I just had one and I was completely under paying myself <laughs> over delivering, which I guess is a good thing, but it just, you know, it wasn't sustainable to make a living. So I have a couple different packages. I do just one time like consult calls for 30 or 60 minutes and then just one time program design, which a lot of people don't end up liking because they like the program, but they really do want that communication aspect of coaching. So the way I break down my actual coaching packages is simply just regular coaching or then coaching with nutrition aspect added to it. For every plan I have, I kind of also add like a little bit of, and this goes without saying, if you're a coach, like there's a degree of life coaching in there. Like people are sharing with you their journey. So there is, you know, you're gonna ride the ups and downs of the clients. And sometimes your job is to just listen and accept. So that, that's part of the job description, just so everyone is aware. Like you're gonna, you're a kind of a therapist in some degree. <laughs> So, and like you said, different prices. Yeah. I actually have something written down here. If I can find it, maybe, oh, I don't want to take, take time, but I have like an ideal client written down for me. So I know that I want them to be into strength training, be between the ages of 28 to 40 and want to get stronger. So I always write down like what I want my ideal client to be, because I have taken on a couple of lifestyle before. And I find that like the hormones, I have to outsource so much that it ends up being so much more work than what I'm charging. Yeah, that means it brings up a good point too. It's because like, just like know when you need to, you know, outsource for something or, or you're not, you know, qualified to be like a doctor. You know, I think there's a lot of coaches these days who, which I get too, because like right now, um, you know, you just go to a doctor, they just give you medicine. So people are looking for something a little more holistic. I mean, exercise is definitely going to improve your health, you know, lifestyle coaching health. But there are some, sometimes where it's like, man, you just might need a little, a little bit more health that I can offer. So no, that's a really good point. Um, but with, um, my packages are kind of similar, you know, I have different tiers. So you can either do one-on-one coaching, which is like the cream of the crop where I give, um, video demo, um, you know, or sorry, give video reviews, um, 
on a, a few times a week. So they'll send me their videos on WhatsApp, ask them questions, and I'll give them feedback. I also like update their programming weekly. And then I have just custom programming where I write an eight-week block out, still put it on the app. But, you know, the only communication we have is just a call beforehand to kind of discuss what their needs are or discuss how the last block went. And then I also have my team unchained, which is a subscription plan, but I have a lot of people doing the same program. So if you, you know, don't have an exercise machine that's on the program, you're going to have to decide, you know, I still, you're going to have to like modify that on your own or, you know, you're not, you're not going to have as, as much accountability because I'm not going to be checking it on you as an individual individual. I'm checking in as a team, you know, supporting, still supporting, answering questions um, people have on the chat box. I'm not going to review videos or anything like that, but that's, you know, a way lower price. So those are kind of my three steps. Do a lot of your there. clients that end um, up doing like a train program and like your programming end up coming over to more of the one-on-one -on -one coaching? Yeah, yeah, they do. And I think that's, that's important too, because if you don't want a team, you can also, you know, sell your programs one off, you know, we have a squat program or, you know, a conditioning program or a strongman program that you sell, um, or you can even give it out for free and people will do it, but they'll go, mm, I want a little more. I want a little more of this coach and they'll hire you on. So that's also a great way to get clients. So, you know, I don't think of my team on chain as a funnel, but it is because those are my people, you know, maybe they're just kind of testing the waters, but I also know that, you know, my one-on-one -on -one clients are my most serious and most of people do my top thing, which is one-on-one -on -one coaching rather than my custom programming. Um, and I like doing one-on-one -on -one coaching even more because I almost get anxious of people just being out there doing the program on their own. You know, I'm like, oh, doing it right to, yeah, it is what it is. I, I, I definitely, but I keep the boundary there. I'm not going to kind of over, you know, obviously if someone, um, something happens, someone really needs help, you know, I'll help offer help, but like, you know, I'm not going to check yeah. them every day. Like, yeah, the boundary so, of that. but you know, it's, it's all about how much, yeah. And it's about how much time it takes. Right. So my team program, I only have to write once. And for, you know, hundred people and then for my custom programming, I, it's just writing the program and talking to them takes the time. And then for my one-on-one -on -one coaching, that is a certain number of hours or, you know, each month, um, that it takes accumulatively, you know, so that's obviously more expensive. So that kind of brings us to like the pricing thing. And I know we both used to yeah. undercharge or under, you know, sell ourselves so much, um, yeah, like so much so I was like barely making it. Um, so our, my first coaching for like a year probably was a hundred dollars a month, and this was in two thousand eighteen and nineteen. Yeah. So if I need if I would need it to make let's say you know fifty thousand dollars a year, how many clients would I need to have? A lot. <laughs> and I have time. You no. know, I don't have time for that. You know that that's kind of. Those are all things that you have to consider before doing a business because, you know, it does, sometimes coaching gets a bad, bad rap because people might be charging five, six hundred dollars a month, you know, or something like that. Um, but, you know, you also don't want to be on the other end charging a hundred dollars a month and underselling yourself because, you know, this is a profession. Like, would you ever go to a job and they say, OK, we're going to pay you, you know, $10 an hour or something like that. Would you accept it? Like, would you leave your other jobs to do it? No. So figuring that out is super important. And I think understanding and what, what you did was great because you understood how much time it would take um, per each client kind of before you went full time because you're already kind of doing it like for free and testing the waters. Um, but understanding how many hours mm -hmm. you actually spend with a, for a client each month and being aware of that. Um, that helps you a lot yes. to set your prices. And one of the most challenging aspects of coaching for me is that it's not the same amount of hours every week. For example, if I have a strongman mm -hmm. client that comes to me and gives me a list of equipment and it's my first time programming with them and, you know, they're at home gym, it's going to take me a couple of hours. Like I joke, it's like, for me, that's the tedious part is making okay. initial program. It takes a long time. And then mm -hmm. there are some weeks too that maybe I've been working with a client for years, but maybe they had a really bad like emotional week. So then, you know, I have to 
get on the phone and talk them through, like, especially, you know, how people get like those newbie games and those PRs and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, like they plateau. And the first time that happens to someone in the lifting world, that's very dramatic. They think something's wrong with them. And I don't want to just brush it off. So there are weeks where, you know, maybe a client, maybe I'm only dedicating an hour to them. And then there are other weeks where I'm, I'm giving them three, four, five hours even of my time. So I think it kind of evens out. But in general, you know, I've made myself like I have to live off this. And I have actually raised my prices before. And I know you've done that too. So that's another thing. It's like, don't be afraid to raise your prices. And if a client can't afford it, then maybe that's when they can, you know, still work with you in a different capacity. Like you have your team unchained. I have my custom programs. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they can just come back when the time is right. And I think that goes, the pricing goes along with the boundaries. Like knowing how much you should give to be a good coach. Exactly. Um, I, I totally hundred percent agree. And I will just like, I will just want to add right now, the strong man competitor in a home gym is a hard, it does take a long time, you know, like it's such a puzzle. Actually the home gym in general is just such a puzzle piece eventually, you know, like it takes a lot of time, but I'm not complaining about, I'm just saying like, yeah, it does. It does take another, a lot, a long time. Um, to program this science because it's mm-hmm. very individual. You know, we aren't copy pasting everyone's program. We can't, you know, definitely can't. We wouldn't be able to. Um, but when it comes to pricing, first I want to talk about using automation. Like I use um, Stripe, so it sends automatically charges them each month. And yeah, it does take it does take some money from me. But for me, that's worth it because guess what? I've had clients before like not pay for a year and me like not know because I didn't have an accountant. Or, you know, and they're actually, that actually recently even happened to me, I know. even though I was using Stripe, but that wasn't the person's fault. But, um, you know, it, it's either for me, I'd rather get paid consistently and not have to have any um, friction between my client where it's like, hey, like, can you pay me? Yes. Can you, pay? you know, like, yeah, like, because I do program ahead a lot as well. So, um you know, just having, having that there. And then no one has to think about it for me. Um, just automatic payments have been super, yes. super helpful. I used to um, have to, especially cause I get oh, anxious yeah. about the payments. Talking about money, raising prices, total anxiety. The first time I raised my prices, cause I was working with a business coach and I like, he was like, what are you like? You need to raise your prices. And I was like, so mm-hmm. terrified. And I only, I didn't lose any clients at first. And then eventually just one client, like a week later decided to leave, but out of, you know, um, maybe 25 clients or so, um, which kind of brings the point, like, what is a full roster for, for you of how many clients you can take on? Cause people probably think I have like a thousand clients by doing, no, I definitely do that. The most clients I've ever had was 30, 30 is my absolute cap right now. I'm at 25 and it's like. And we've talked about this, it's tough because you always want to kind of keep one or two more than you probably should just for financial reasons, but it gets extremely Mm -hmm. stressful. And that's another thing I think I want to touch on is people don't realize, like, I think I joke, people think that like being an online coach, like, oh, cool. You just go to the gym and sit at home all day and hang out with your dog. Like, no, I work being an online coach. I work so many more hours than I ever have in my life. I don't know about you. I'm sure it's the same. Oh no, for sure. Because you know, it's like, yeah, exactly. Cause you're, you're dealing with, um, you know, your clients, your daily activities, your marketing, your other stuff. I mean, it's, it's definitely a lot. It's, it's, you know, it. we talk about this too a lot. It, you get freedom to move around the country and work, your, work at home with your dog, but you're losing some freedoms because it, it all falls on you and you kind of feel like you need to keep, you know, keep fueling the fire and keeping the, the motor running. Um, so, and not to complain, cause like, obviously I love my job. Um, but just to know that, yeah, it's gonna come with that stress and pressure because, um, you know, everything you make is on you. No one's handing you clients. No one's, you know, you can't predict if a client's going to lose their job or, um, you know, leave you or whatever. Um, so just knowing that, yeah, it, it does come a little bit with like the freedom comes a little bit with so, something that kind of keeps you caged in a little bit too, you know, in your 
own anxieties, at least if you're anything like us and like really care about your product and business. And that's probably, you know, just goes to show that, you know, a lot of people who coach are very caring, empathetic people, maybe a little bit perfectionists, you know, they're go-getters, they want everything to succeed. Um, so just be aware of that and try to, you know, just know that going yep. into it, really, because if you never, especially if you've never had your own exactly. business. Yes, and this is a perfect way, as we're going to talk about our fifth point, pros and cons, we've already touched on some of them. Do not go into this thinking that if you love fitness or whatever you're trying to coach relationships, you know, I have, I have some friends that are like sex therapists that do it in an online capacity. Do not go into it thinking that that's all you're going to do. If that makes sense. Like you're not like, we don't spend our time at the gym and if anything, the gym used to be, it's still an escape for me and I still love it. But now for both of us, like oftentimes it is work because we do have to film tutorials over there so it is work and they say like you know what's the saying like do your passion you never work a day in your life but then also on the flip side like if you do turn your passion and hobby into your career then it, it is a job so i see both sides of that for sure <laughs> yeah i i always i always go back and forth too i see it for sure um but yeah i mean it is definitely we've been doing this for a few years now so like it's definitely something we like and want to keep, keep on pursuing. So don't let that scare you, but just know that it is, it's a lot of pressure and a lot of work. Um, Let's uh, talk about, so some of the pros that we've touched on are the ability to move around. You know, we've lived in several different places and I guess on the opposite side of that, the con would be that like, you know, there's been times when Christy and I are in beautiful Hilton Head Island we're on ESPN Live, and right before we're on we're on ESPN, we're literally running up to our room because we have client check ins So there's it's a hard balancing act, and especially because we do have you know like agreements in place with our clients, like it's it's a relationship that they expect us when to answer. You can work ahead too, but you know you still have to have that communication or relationship aspect, which can get hard. So. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what it kind of reminds me too, and, and I'm not trying to play, claim about this at all, but you know, I kind of have to pick and choose what's a vacation, what's not. So when I visited my family a few months ago, you know, I was working the whole time, you know, it's kind of stressed because I had some like deadlines that, you know, you, you, I can't just wake up Monday and have the clients not have programs, you know? So, um, but recently I went on a 10 day vacation to Washington with Gary and it was amazing. And I did have certain check-in days way less. I had like two check-in days while I was there. Um, you know, cause I, I'm not going to just leave my clients for 10 days, but I had to work ahead You were working. We, yeah. to go get two <laughs> weeks ahead. I worked myself where I like wanted to freak out. Like I really did. Like I was like, I was like just constantly working and like, so stressed when we get done. And I like get like three weeks worth work done in like a week, you know, well, the weeks leading up, you know, the we every, there was like a month leading up to this trip. So I, so I was actually really proud of myself because I didn't feel guilty while I was there. Normally if I'm, if I'm gone for like three days and like a little bit less connected, like I feel so guilty this time I was like, okay, like I know I did went above and beyond for this last month and they're all taken care of because honestly, I'm not gonna lie. Some of my pet peeves when people like post on social media, like, sorry guys, I'm like traveling. I'll be a little late. Like, you know, I'll be like, to Monday afternoon, I'll get your program. Like, how did I do that? I wish I could do that. Like, but, but I don't, but like, I'm like, be an adult, yeah. work ahead. But like, anyway, so, but, so it's like pet peeve of mine, but maybe I'm just jealous because they just don't care, but I really care. And I like, anyway, so it was great because I could go on vacation. No boss was like, you can't go for 10 days, Yes, but I don't have an assistant. I don't have an assistant coach, which is a great idea. If you, if you get to that level, um, that's all. And you want to build, you want your business structure to look like that. That's great. But I don't have one. Um, so yeah, like I, in order to get that vacation, I literally like made myself go crazy for a few weeks, maybe like a month. And I was like competing. It could be at the week before I still work through that competition. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to make a pity party. I'm yeah, just saying that's the reality of it. Like, that's what I signed up for. I signed up for it. Um, so, 
Yeah. I remember, that's, yeah. That, that's a pro and con. I can do what I want, but also like, um, you know, cause I can see Gary who has a, you know, normal person job. He can't do what he wants throughout the day, but yeah. he gets free vacation time. And so when he goes on vacation, like he's not responding to emails, you know? So that's a pro and con. It's definitely first world problems, but believe me, like you, you'll feel the pressure and stress. Cause like, you don't like you love your clients. You don't want to let them down. So getting ahead of it and then also getting ahead of the teams and all that stuff. It was a lot. Yeah. So yeah, now I, I want to paint. Now I know what it takes to take days off is yes. extra work. I want to paint a pro and con story that describes online coaching to the T. So I went overseas to visit my best friend in Gold Coast, Australia. I also had a strongman seminar while I was there. So I'm working from one of the most beautiful places in the world. I remember I was on my friend's desk. I mean, excuse me, on my friend's porch working with a gorgeous sunset. Meanwhile, the Australians are making fun of me like, you're on holiday, you crazy American. Why are you working? And I just had to kind of explain to them, like, I have the privilege of being here, of breathing this air, but I'm self-employed. I can't just take a day off. I'm always on the, you know, on the flight working. Again, like you, I try to work ahead, but it was kind of, it, it gets tough in moments when I remember I did my seminar in person. And I was able to meet people mm -hmm. that I had been connected with the strongman community for years and they wanted to hang out at, but Sunday is one of my main competitor check-in days. So unless I wanted to pull an all nighter, which I didn't, I had to say no. So, you know, you pick and choose just like anything. But then I look at the flip side, like where Gary has a quote unquote normal person job. I wouldn't want to have to be strapped back to an office. I still like my freedom to just be able to work wherever. But again, and I keep repeating this, but know that it is work. And I think to change the subject a little bit, one other con is that it's not in-person training. So that every client you get, sometimes I've had to tell people, I remember this one girl, she really just wasn't there yet. I was like, you need to hire someone in person to learn the basic mechanics because I cannot, I'm not just going to take someone that you know, it doesn't deserve programming yet. They need to learn the fundamental movements first. That can be another con. You have to turn people away. Yeah, exactly. And on the flip side, um, I think I mentioned this earlier too, is like I get connected to my perfect clients so easily because, you know, there's so many people out there. It's so much easier to find some through real or, you know, something on social media um, that they'll, connect with me, you know, rather than trying to convince everybody I meet on the personal training floor that they're right for me. It's like, no, these people could be my friend. If we would live close together, we'd probably be friends. I actually have a client here who is an online client, but she'll train with me sometimes um, at the Sharma gym. I'm seeing her today. We'll become friends. Like, you know, like these are people that, and I'm not saying you should be friends with your clients. You just have some boundaries there. Right. But like, you know, like this person, like um, I became, had a friendship relationship with him. We built that and stuff like that. But you know, these are people who found, you know, like, well, I guess she's not a good example. She lives here, but there's people that like, you can, I trained people. My first client was in Japan, in Japan. Um, so stuff like that. And like, she's been my client, um, since, since then she left for a year recently and just came back. So that was how many years, like five years. I mean, so these people, I would never have known if it wasn't for the internet and, I'd be able to like actually like see and hear like things, you know, she got married, that, those kind of things. Like she, you know, got promoted in the army and then got married and has moved all these places. Like I know this about this person I've never met. Um, but I've also met like you met some new people. So you, that, that's, what's great about it. You know, although they're online, I recently had two clients um, do a meet here in South Carolina. I got to meet them for the first time and it was really fun. So, you know, as I will say a con is it's pretty, and I've been really feeling this lately is it's very lonely and isolating. I think to work in, um, at home in general, I, I love it, but I wish like I, some of them miss having other people around. It's just like, it's, you're just alone with yourself all day, unless you go somewhere to work. Um, so, but when you do get to see those people, you know, so much different than being overstimulated at a gym with a bunch of people, but you know, it's like, totally different you're just by yourself at your house or something but um you know 
at least be able to like, meet these people in person and make more connections is really cool. Cause like, if I was just here in South Carolina at a gym, I don't think I, I eventually I'd get clients for me, but I don't think there's like as many as I have good ones as I have like online right now. You know, yeah. they're my people. No, it can certainly be isolating, especially like I've tried going different places to work, but when you're doing demo videos and talking sometimes like a coffee shop can be a little bit crazy and distracting. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one day a week where when I film tutorials, and I do have one in-person client. I don't want any more than that, where I'll just work from the gym that day. And it's nice because then a lot of my clients actually ended up going to that gym. And so it's, it's funny how it kind of, for mm -hmm. me, my business seems to wherever I go, I get more clients to, even though they're online, so that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, I did want to say, you know, we've talked about five different points. I did want to say you give your clients, or I think just everyone, is this how you get clients your ebook? Yes. So, um, you know, this is a little bit more of like when we get into like marketing in general and is giving out a freebie um, and something that is valuable as well. Like it's not just like some like little freebie. It's mine is an ebook. It's a short ebook that just explains how to warm up for the squat bench and deadlift. And then also about the McGill big three and how to activate your core. Um, and it's links to demo videos I do. Cause it gives people an idea of like the value in training, you know, um, people who don't know what coaching is all about. Um, so I have that ebook that I'm actually going to link down below for you guys to check out and um, download for yourselves. Maybe you'll learn something too. Um, but that is just one thing I have that I can have on my website for people to download on my link tree. Um, you know, I can send out a, to an email list. Um, it could also help build my email list, which is um, important. Um, maybe even more important than Instagram. Um, so all those things can help get people to, you know, know what you're all about. And also, you know, for me, I don't like to just constantly be like, buy this, buy this, buy this, you know, sometimes it needs to be you giving someone yes. something to, to, you know, give them something valuable. Exactly. And I give out a free, I have like a 12 week free training template. I think that's a really good point is mm -hmm. like, Yes, it is your job to self-promote your coaching business, but it's also your job to give out stuff. And oftentimes, like, I feel like that comes around. Like, if you give out free resources, even if someone DMs me, like, something that I sell for $10 on my website, it, which is, like, a contest walkthrough, like, I'll just give it to them. Because it's like, okay, if, if I think it's going to help them, then that's what actually really matters. So I try to do that. I try to... I try to, and I think that's a good way. Uh, actually, I'll ask you first. If you could just leave whoever's listening with one piece of coaching advice, what would it be? Um, I would say, I hope this is not what you're going to say, but you just kind of inspired me to say, but be helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, that's your job is just, you know, as long as you're constantly trying to be helpful for the client and your heart's in the right place, you're going to be great, you know, because that means you're going to continuously try to improve, continue to try to learn and continue to try to support your clients and improve yourself. So, you know, if you're ever scared about posting content or giving feedback, just ask yourself, is this helpful? Am I trying to help? And the answer is yes. You're going to be just fine. I agree with that completely. I would also say to ask yourself, like, I wish someone had told me this sooner, Kind of, if, and if you're an athlete or if you're a competitive person, I kind of always ask myself, like, how can I become a better coach for my clients? Like, not, oh, why do I have clients that are checking in on time? It's like, okay, where am I messing up? Like, am I not doing something right? You know, just being very self-aware. And I think that goes back to something that's often overlooked in the coaching industry is the communication aspect and being self-aware because it's not, you know, we're dealing with humans. We're much more than just numbers, data, science. Like this is someone's livelihood and life. And you have the ability to really either enhance their life with our passion, which is lifting and strength training, or you have the ability to scare them away from this world, which is the last thing we ever want to do. <laughs> exactly. They're coming to you because they trust you and want to have your knowledge and belong in the community, really, when it comes down to it. So that's really good point. I thought you were going to say something you said when um, we were talking about coaching before. You said, 
Oh, just yeah. Start. Yeah, just start is a big thing, too. Like I said, I think if you, so if, if you're even listening to this podcast episode, you're already ahead of where Christy and I kind of were. I think it would be very about beneficial to start, but then it may be also not get so obsessed with researching, but maybe, you know, reach out, talk to a few people that are in the industry first, but don't, don't be so obsessed with how to start. It's better just to get your feet wet because you're going to mess up. You should mess up. Like that's part of the job description. Yeah. And it's going to, it's going to change and it evolve. You're going to change and evolve. Like my coaching is so much different now than it was before. Like that's, that's how, you know, it's just like when you start lifting, yeah. you know, before you probably had like your knees caving in on a squat and you're just a barbell. And now like you can squat 315 or something, you know, the same thing. You're going to, going to, you know, improve your tactics and your um, certain kind of, you know, everything you do as you go. Absolutely. So if you guys have any questions, you can reach out to Christy Ryan as well as in the show notes, you're going to get her ebook, which has the warm ups and the McGill, how to activate your core. And then I'm going to give you my coaching agreement. So for any aspiring coaches, feel free to use it. You can change around the terminology a little bit. As you'll see, I'm very, very thorough and direct. That's just my style. It might not work for you, but feel free to use it. And that's all we have for today. We will do another episode soon. And I hope that this coaching episode helped you. Make sure you subscribe.